Hi, well, welcome to my channel. This video is not instructional. It is just to introduce you to what you're going to need if you want to play with me when I'm making house rocks. They're called house rocks because I make houses out of little rocks. Okay, well, number one, need to collect some rocks. They do not have to be pretty rocks. They do not have to stand on their own. I will show you how to do that. When you are done, you will end up with cute little things. This one actually sits on top of a quarter. That's how little it is. You will get them to be cool and paintable. You will learn how to add details and then sand them down. That one is not ready for painting. Now, what do you need? Okay, aside from the rocks, you're going to need a few basics. The first one being... Da, da, da. This is my favorite, not because it's the best in the world, but it is very good and it's easy for me to um, obtain. I get this one at our local Lowe's, but you can find the same kind of a thing at a Home Depot or anywhere they sell hardware supplies. It's a wood filler. Do not get wood putty. That's a different animal. It shrinks. You have other problems with it. This is awesome. It has actual wood in it. It's very strong and notice interior, exterior, and stainable. Those are the those are the most important aspects of this stuff. Next, the stuff dries out really fast, so I'm going to tell you right now how you're going to deal with this. Get yourself a small container to start because you might not like this as a hobby. So what you're going to do is get yourself an inexpensive plain sponge before it is used while it's still dry or in its brand new out of the package soft form. You're going to cut a piece of sponge to fit into the top of whatever size um, wood filler container that you end up with. And before you put the sponge in, you're going to cover it with plastic wrap. You're going to wet the sponge with purified water. We're trying to avoid mold here. The wet sponge or damp sponge is not, you don't want it to drip. Should always sit on top of the plastic, never directly on the putty. So it'll fit like that. Make sure it fits all the way down into the container and then you will close the container normally. I discovered not that long ago actually that if you do not do this, no matter how tightly this seems to seal, it will start to dry out at the edges. And although this is not the most expensive stuff in the world, when you are a starving artist like me, you're going to want to make sure you get the best bang for your buck. So uh, make sure you seal this properly. While you're at the hardware store, you might want to pick yourself up some sandpaper. I just tear pieces off and use it to sand the rocks after they're dry. Also, emery boards. Emery boards are real handy for some of those little tight spots, so those, these are bigger. And I will show you a trick uh, when I'm actually working on the rocks of using a piece of sandpaper to level them off so they stand properly. You are also going to need paper towels, some plastic wrap, an old jar of water, some little bowls for when you want to mix paint and use um, little pieces of sponge. Cut pieces of sponge are awesome for painting with. A cheap bowl palette. This was a dollar. It's reusable a million times. Uh, the thing is don't scratch it. So if you get paint in it, don't scrape it off necessarily. It's not really necessary. Uh, just throw your wet paint on top of the thoroughly dried paint and you can keep using that until the paint's thick enough to peel off. <laughs> Shortcuts. You're going to need some brushes. Now the brushes do not have to be expensive because actually what you're going to be working with, acrylic paint and wood filler, they're kind of hard on these inexpensive brushes. So. Uh, the nice thing about it is even when you have kind of ruined a brush for certain kinds of painting, the fuzzy edges will actually be good for doing um, detail work. Or like when you need to make grass, you do not do everything blade by blade. You do like an impressionistic version. But the three brushes you're going to want to uh, get right away, actually four, Silly me. Here we go. You can get them in a set. So look for these. You want a fan brush. You want a flat brush for covering the whole rock. You're going to want a pointer or a spotter. Um, 
you're going to get the smallest one that you can handle and then also very small this happens to be a 20 odd 20 over zero odd is zero you're going to just go for it's a liner really here i'll show you another liner <laughs> It's like a spotter, but it's it's longer. This one is a round, a three-aught. So you're gonna be doing, again, very small brushes. If you look in a craft shop, any craft shop will do, you'll be able to find these in sets very inexpensively, especially if it's go to, going back to school time, they have all these little deals for students and beginning students. So get yourself some brushes. I've been collecting them for a while obviously you're going to need a little bowl you're going to be filling this uh, about a third of the way with plain clear water because this is what you're going to rinse your fingers in you're going to be using your fingers to model some of the putty uh, filler on the rock so you're going to want some water handy for your fingers also to rinse off your tools now, you do not need a bunch of tools. I got all of these supposedly wood carving tools with all different ends for $6. So, you know, a buck each and really, really cheap. This one actually is my favorite to use. You can tell by the buildup of the wood filler. Um, I kind of like it, so I haven't broken it off, but it would come off very easily with a whack from a hammer. It's just a nice little spatula. It costs $5, uh, brand new. You can find these at hardware stores, so just look for them. This is a stainless steel spatula. It looks almost like a dental tool, and it's really good for, well, I've done a lot of stuff with this, mixing paint. I have used it for sculpting. This is my favorite one, um, but you will find also that other ones come in handy, like this one. Let's see if I can get a good picture of that. I'm still getting used to this camera. Um, using this to scrape things or make some texture. So, again, now I've got all of my tools fit into one little jar, which is a jelly jar. So it's, it's not even a big jar. It's great. Okay, and now for the paints. This is the coolest part of all. The paints are really, really cheap. You do not get fancy with these. If you're painting rocks, remember, rocks are going to kind of be wearing on your brushes. Now, I mean, if you want to go really fancy and expensive, you can actually invest in stuff that's a little harder on your lungs. You can go with enamel paints. Uh, enamel paints will be more of an indoor-outdoor. You don't have to worry about them peeling off the rock if somebody leaves it out in the sun for a summer. But if these are little art objects, so you're really not supposed to be leaving them out in the sun anyway. However, back to the paints. Oh, another thing. Forgot about this. This is way more expensive than the wood filler, but in an emergency, if you can't find wood filler, you can go to an art store and get some Liquitex modeling uh, paste. This one is a medium, a gel medium one. They may have a heavier one, but that's hard to believe because when you weigh it, hold this, it's like, whoa, because it's full of ground up stone. That's why it's modeling paste. But it's a pure white, and if you need that for any reason, hey, go for it. I keep it around for some weird stuff that I'm doing. Now, these paints, notice I've always been collecting these for a while. These are really cheap. They're just cheap acrylic hobby paints. They run from 50 cents to a buck. So for $5, you can get your basic palette needed to get started with these drugs. And you don't need a whole lot. I mean, think about it, $5 or 50 cents each, you've got a lot of paint. Now, the final step. I cover the rocks when they are thoroughly dry with a Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. You put this on in thin coats, you can do up to two coats, you won't need more than that. It'll make it nice and shiny. By the way, when they're shiny, they're also very slippery, keep that in mind. But it makes a nice gloss, it protects them. It's also acrylic, so it's water cleanup, which is my top priority. I have bad lungs, so I have to protect them. And I don't like to use anything with fumes. I used to work with, um, oh, automotive industry kind of paint, <laughs> enamels, really heavy duty stuff, the stuff that they paint on guitars. Um, it's nice to, to look at, but boy, 
you need ventilation like crazy. So going with these inexpensive paints, are, number one, it's easier on your lungs. It's way easier on cleanup. And it's way easier on your budget. So if you're a creative, nutty person like me where you can't keep still, you've got to keep making things, you can invest in rock painting really inexpensively. Now, I know right now it's all the vogue to write words on rocks and or you know do drawings on rocks but actually what people are using for those are enamel pens they get expensive so what i'm going to be doing is not using any pens i'm going to be using regular old acrylics and regular old brushes which are way cheaper than buying these things that are not refillable and have to go into landfill where we can do a lot of work with this stuff before anything goes to a landfill Yes, I am also conscious of that. So whether you have really cool little rocks or really big rocks, we can have fun on the cheap. So that's it for supplies. If you have any questions, please leave them here at the bottom of the video. I will get back to you as fast as I can. I will be demonstrating this periodically on the Call Me Galen channel on Twitch.tv. So if you want to be in on when I do these things, which right now is kind of sporadic, I do broadcast there regularly twice a week. So go ahead, uh, become a follower, and then you'll always get a notice when I am broadcasting. And you can check and see if I'm doing a broadcast on uh, the art channel or a broadcast on the Just Chatting channel. Okay, so that's about it. I hope you all have a good day. Thanks for stopping by and checking this out, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.